before I start this video, I've just looked at it and there might be a little problem, well there is a little problem with sound, um, it's because I've got an ear infection actually and uh, I haven't recognised it as we were going, um, but I'm sorry for that. Hi everybody, Philip McCordle again. Now this is number four. It's the professional macro. This is how to show, show you how to do it. One of the biggest problems with macro is the depth of field. The closer you get in, the less depth of field you've got. You can stop down to whatever you want and it's not going to help you. So we use a system that's called focus stacking. What it is, we move the camera forward and we take lots of pictures, put them into the computer and the computer will separate the sharp pieces and put them all together. It works beautifully, it's called focus stacking. Very simple to do, surprisingly enough. But anyway, let's have a look at the equipment I'll be showing you. This obviously is a flash unit, it's got two heads and a little modelling light so you can actually see what you're doing. Works very, very well. So well in fact that I'll be doing a review on it very soon. As you can see here, it uh, it's, looks like a standard flash, it's just got these things coming out of it. We have a little screen. Now I use the screen because I find it very difficult looking through that for a long time and this screen I really don't like, it's too small. So I've attached a screen, I've got the camera and screen on one old, one of my old bars, um, it's not doing anything, it's an old macro bar that was used, uh, used by hand. We've got a little support under the lens because I don't like having too much weight on the front of the body, so that's under there. Here we've got, it's a an automatic advancer. Now, what I mean by that is that it works with Wi-Fi with my little laptop, uh, or a telephone, by the way, and I can program it to advance and automatically take photographs. So I can advance it from uh, 0.02 of a millimeter to whatever I want. Now, the bar I'm using is a prototype. The final one will be with me, I'm hoping, in about a week. We'll see, and then I'll do a complete review on it. Um, it might be interesting for you. But don't forget, you don't have to use bar. What you can use, you can just change the focus a little bit each time. Uh, what else can you do? Uh, um, or, you can just, or you can just move your camera in and out. Uh, but believe me, if you're trying to move it at 0.25 of a millimetre, it's a lot easier on the rail. <laughs> but this isn't an ad for the rail or the flash unit, so let's get on. <laughs> it's got a bit cold in here, so I put a jumper on, and you notice the shirt's changed anyway. Um, it's a bit chilly. There's a heater going in the background, which is whirring a bit. Sorry about that. Anyway, where were we? Um, yes, I've got on here a Sigma and it's the 7200 uh, Sigma. I've also got on the front, and that's the interesting bit on this, I've got on the front a 50mm 1.8 that I have backwards. There's a little ring you can get just to be able to do that, and that fits on there very nicely. So I've got one lens the wrong way around, and one lens the right way around. I can change my f-stop, of course, by this lens. Now, what else? Oh, yes, I'm going to be comparing that setup with this lens. Now, this is the Canon MPE65, and just look at this. I really love this lens. I don't know how they get all that in that little, in that little starting thing, but that is a very good lens only for macro. It doesn't focus um, far, far enough away to shoot anything else. It's a macro lens. Uh, it costs a thousand pounds and is known as the best macro lens on the market. We'll see how that holds up against that. Well, the first thing to decide is what subject we're going to use to demonstrate all this. I thought, as I don't want something that uh, will move in two hours, 
or even more than that, I thought we'd start with a matchstick. Now, I put a matchstick on a hypodermic needle, that's always a good way of holding things, and um, on a retort stand. Now, the retort stand is available on mccordle.com. Not quite this one, a different make, but uh, very good. So there we go, that's how we're going to start. Well, as we're going to the screen, we'll have a look. I'll show you the problem. Now, you see how little depth of field we've got there at F11. Now, if I press a button on my computer or my uh, smartphone, I can move that forward as much as I want or as little as I want. We'll go in 0 0.5 of a millimeter and we'll have a look. You see how the motor is taking it forward and keeping parts of it in focus. Now, the thing is to work out how many 0.5s I need to get what I want in focus and that tells me the distance I'm covering. In this case, it's about six millimeters, uh, something like that. So we'll bring it back and I can bring it back a lot further. There we go, back. It'll then settle itself against the, there we go. It'll settle itself there. And from then on, I just tell the camera or tell the computer how many pictures I want. So that's how basically the rail works. So I've loaded my five images into Zarina Stacker. Now Photoshop's got a stacker as well, but I just like this one. Um, and we're going to stack them. And all we do is press a line and stack. And now you'll see it happen. So here we go. You've got the image on the left, the next image is on the left, and it's going to add it to the image on the right. Takes a bit of time. There it goes. And you can see then there we see on the left, we see the circle that's in focus, and it's going to add that to the right. There it is. And there it goes. It goes like that all the time. So this is just a little test we did to see exposure and lighting. And you see how that is coming along very nicely, bit by bit, it's all coming into focus. And there we are. That's the five images we've done. Well, it's obvious uh, that we've got to do a lot more images to get all the way up to here. This was only two millimetres, nearer two and a half millimetres. We're going to need, obviously, to go right up here. So we're going to have to do, I don't see any errors, but sometimes you can get a a bit that's out of focus, uh, there might be a bit there, a bit that's out of focus there. Um, so I think we squeeze them up and do probably 25 images and we'll see how we go. Well I won't bore you looking at 25 flashes, so we'll go straight on. This is one of the images and that just shows you how little depth of field there is. So I'm going to get 20 so you can imagine I'll probably only get up to, to just past the wood. Now here's a complete stacked image. Now I don't think that's looking bad. It's uh, okay. It's going to need another 30 or 40 shots to get it going up the wood. But uh, that looks a pretty good result really for this lens setup. Let's get on and look at the other lens. Well I'll quickly change the lens and uh, put my favourite lens on. There we go. Put that one over here. Now here's a demonstration how difficult it is with macros to get something right in the camera. You see how everything moves with the slightest movement. Now that is obviously too big. So I can do nothing except bring back the camera. So it just proves that this is going to be slightly further away. If we bring the camera back to there and we try and find our subject, which should be about there, and then we focus on it, we get nowhere, hang on, there we go, so we've still got to bring it back. Now before I shoot I've got to of course uh, change the shutter speed because we're going to shoot with flash and uh, I'll also turn off the live view and we will do 40 shots on this uh, and that should be enough. Well, here's the shot from the macro. I think that's quite good. Um, I've used, in fact, 36 pictures. I looked at the JPEGs and chose 36 that were actually in focus because I always put two before and two afterwards at least. So it looks very good. 
The colour is different from the other one, of course. That's logical because they're different lenses. Let's compare the two together. Now, it's obvious that the macro is better. But the other one's not too bad either. It's just got a little bit of problems here and there. But I've only ever tried those two lenses together. It might be worth trying other lenses. Well, once again, I'm sorry about the sound and I hope you enjoyed the video. It would be nice if you shared it with other people. That's always good. And don't forget to look at some of the old videos. A lot of people are asking me questions where there are already videos up. So go back over the 137 and see if there's something you like. Cheers. Next time. See you next time.